Hey, what is up? Asal here from Instaproofs. So in my product rule video, remember that I explained that to find the derivative of the following functions that are the product of two or more functions, we have to use the product rule. But now, let's say instead that we have the following functions that are the quotient of separate functions, u of x on top and v of x on the bottom. How do we find their derivative then? Well, we can still use the product rule to find the derivative. Because if you treat all the functions in the denominator, or all the v of x, as functions in the numerator raised to the negative 1 power, then the overall function f of x become products, and we can use the product rule to find their derivative. And although that is true, it is also true that if you have an extremely complicated function, such as e to the sine to x over secant squared of sine to x with secant squared of sine to x in the denominator, then turning this function in the denominator into a function in the numerator raised to the negative one power, and then applying the product rule can become very troublesome and lengthy, as computing its first derivative becomes lengthy. I mean, just look at secant squared of sine to x. It is clearly a composite of five functions, p of q of r of s of t of x, given as follows. So finding its first derivative would require using the chain rule four times, which is just too much. So it begs the question, can we derive another rule that simplifies the process for such quotients? Well, the answer is, of course. And that specific rule that we are going to devise is called the quotient rule. And in this video, which is part one of my two-part series, I will just go over the proof of that rule. So given a function, f of x equal to u of x over v of x, a quotient of two functions, we want to derive the derivative of this function. Or in other words, we want to prove the quotient rule. So we start off with writing our derivative. And then the first thing we want to do is we want to apply the limit definition, which is the derivative of a function f of x with respect to x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You should be very familiar with this. So applying this and letting f of x be u of x over v of x, and then f of x plus h be u of x plus h, over v of x plus h, and then plugging back into the outer limit definition, we then get the following. And if you evaluated the limit right now, meaning if you plugged in h equals 0 in our expression, we'd get u of x over v of x minus u of x over v of x in the numerator, which is just 0, and we get 0 in the denominator. So we get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. And we won't really get anywhere. So what we have to do is we have to do some manipulation to take this expression out of indeterminate form. So to get common denominators, we multiply u of x plus h over v of x plus h by v of x over v of x, and we multiply negative u of x over v of x by v of x plus h over v of x plus h, and then get the following. Again, that h is still in the denominator. So if you were to value right now, we still get our problem, because you still end up with zero in the denominator. So we're not done yet. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to introduce new terms. Minus u of x times v of x plus v of x times u of x. And the logic behind why I introduced this term, you will understand a little bit later throughout the derivation. So by applying the limit property, that the limit of the sum of two equations is equal to the sum of the limit of each of those equations, we then split our limit up into the two following limits. We factor out a negative one from our second limit, and the numerator on the inside becomes minus u of x times v of x plus u of x times v of x plus a. Rewriting this, we get the following. And now the logic should become a little bit more apparent as to why I introduced minus u of x times v of x plus u of x times v of x earlier in the derivation. As we can conveniently factor out v of x and 1 over v of x plus h times v of x from our first limit and factor out u of x times 1 over v of x plus h over v of x from our second limit and arrive at this. We now apply the limit property that the limit of the product of two functions is equal to the product of the limit of each of those functions on our first limit, and then get the following. And then we apply the same limit property on our second limit, and then get these three limits in turn for our second limit. And now we can pretty much see what the answer is going to look like. All we have to do is apply the finishing touches and evaluate the limits. So by evaluating the first and fourth limit, v of x and u of x, we get our quotient rule equal to v of x minus u of x so far. And then by evaluating the second and fifth limit, 1 over v of x plus h times v of x, and 1 over v of x plus h times v of x, we then get 1 over v of x times v of x plugged into our rule as follows. And lastly, 
seeing that the limit u of x plus h minus u of x over h and the limit v of x plus h minus v of x over h are of the following form, and seeing that this form equals the derivative, we then get the derivative of u of x and the derivative of v of x plugged in as follows. Lastly, seeing that 1 over v of x times v of x is simply just 1 over v of x squared and factoring it out, we then arrive at this. Simplifying and rewriting in prime notation, we then get the quantity u of x over v of x prime equal to v of x times u prime of x minus u of x times v prime of x all over v of x squared. And this here is our quotient rule. And for those of you who might have trouble memorizing this, just know that if you let our top function u of x be labeled high and our bottom function v of x be labeled low, then the derivative d is equal to low d high minus high d low all over low squared. I hope that helps out. So there you have it, the derivation for the quotient rule. For example, stay tuned for part two. And as always, thanks for watching.